guys, what's up, what's up? Dr. Mo here, a digital nomad physician at digitalnomadphysician.com. So strap yourself in because this one's going to be incredibly dull, but I'm going to try to make it interesting for you. So you're wondering about keyword searches. You have a website, you have a practice, maybe it's acne and dermatology, or like me, it's disease prevention and my health coaching website, which is heart health coaching. So if you know a little bit about keyword searches, you already know that one of the ways that we might do a keyword search is to go in here and say heart health, right? If we're doing a heart health search, uh, we're going to get a bunch of stuff. And what's important to understand here is you're going to get things like sponsored stuff from Kaiser Permanente, um, whoever human is, prescription treatment website, I don't know what that is, the CDC, of course, and then you're going to get some suggestions. Um, how do you keep your, your heart healthy? And these are called SERMs, where there is an automatic answer to your question, which is kind of nice because Google will display that. The good thing about it is you already get your question answered, right? But you may not click on the website to actually go to it, which might be bad for you as a doctor, as a physician who's advertising your practice. So here's some information from Harvard, American Heart Association. Obviously, these websites are going to rank, well, incredibly high. John Hopkins, Healthline, all the classic stuff, right? What's interesting further down here is the related searches. So you can create an article like heart health tips. And the point of this is to say that heart health is probably quite competitive but maybe heart health, heart health tips is not quite as much. Now we go to WebMD, nutrition.gov, more healthline stuff, hhs.gov. Um, as you can see, it just keeps on going and it's all mostly sponsored, highly competitive words. Uh, for some reason, Fox News came up there. But if I go on heart, heart health tips, um, I still see a pretty good amount of competition here. It's mostly sponsored stuff. Um, here's uh, what's called a CIRM. So it's a, the Google, the search engine, has scraped the website, this website, uh, health.gov, and says to prevent heart health or heart health tips for prevention is eat healthy, be active, and manage stress and alcohol and smoking. And then there's more content here. And then you can see there's some stuff on Quora. There's a little bit on Reddit. This is the subreddit, Mind Body Health. And I'm telling you guys, this is important for you to figure this out because we're going to get to it in a minute. Now, you want to find some long keyword searches. Here you go, 25 heart healthy foods, heart health exercises. These are called long tail keywords. And we're going to go into that in more detail. So I'm going to take you through this content, a really, really wonderful article that I highly recommend you check out. And I'll put it in the show notes. So backlink keyword search, the definitive guide. And it really is quite definitive. So we're going to start going down here and I'm just going to give you a great overview of keyword searches. The basics of a keyword search is that it entails the research analysis and application of search terms. People enter into a search engine to gain data insights to help optimize the organic traffic for use in their marketing purposes. So for example, if my digital nomad physician brand, if somebody searches how to do telemedicine from abroad, in fact, let's put that in. Let's open a new one. Google. Did I get it? I typed in Google wrong. So if I type in doing telemedicine from abroad, I got this. <laughs> You'll see that my website comes up first. And in fact, I know that because it's one of the top things that comes up. What's not good or good is that there's no CERM, meaning there's no uh, answer given to that question. Can I do telemedicine from, from abroad, right? Uh, but there's more content here. Also for my website, there is more content here from Global Medical, um, and there's more content there. It was pretty good. Uh, there is some good information here. And then if you go further down, you'll see that my YouTube video on the topic comes up. There is some stuff from Reddit that comes up. Uh, SteadyMD, a telemedicine company, uh, comes up. There's some stuff on Quora, etc. And the, the reason I'm saying this is because this is considered a long tail keyword. But this is the keyword that I want somebody to land 
on my website for. So that is why we do keyword research. Keyword research is important for search engine optimization, meaning that in order for somebody to find me to optimize my search strategy, I need to find the right keywords and learn to rank for those keywords. So this person goes on to talk about how keyword search helped his or her site uh, traffic grow and they talk about you know what they exactly did in order to get there so we'll let me keep going down believe me this is important the stuff will come up so what they did is they found in the, in the beginning when there wasn't a lot of competition they used the word mobile SEO which is if you think about it these days um, from back in the day when they did it uh, probably not that competitive but now it's incredibly competitive but they were able to rank really high so backlink.com which is the website we're on was able to rank very high on that list and here's the CERM meaning mobile SEO what is it about a little bit of information it all comes up and they can see that they bring thousands of people every month to their websites this is their daily uh, tracking of people that come to their website. So it's really good. And you want people to come on your website so that they can buy something from you, interact with you, etc. So how to find keyword ideas. Now, how do you do it? You're, you're a dermatologist, orthopedist, oncologist, you're a pediatric neurologist, you are a functional medicine doctor, you're whatever that you are. How do you find it? And so this is the this is the part. Now, he talks about this template. I downloaded it. It, it wasn't of any use to me, so I'm going to skip that. Brainstorm a list of topics. I think this is really, really important. Well, you'd, you'd want to ask yourself, what topics do people search for that are related to my business? So for example, for their business, it's mostly social media, marketing, website traffic, blogging, pay-per-click, right? For me, it would be heart health, cardiovascular medicine, uh, lipids, cholesterol, heart attack, stroke, uh, etc. These aren't keywords. These are the topics that we're thinking about, right? So they suggest go to Wikipedia and type in coffee. So for example, let's do Wikipedia. Uh, let's go over here. And so I'm going to put in, I don't know, heart health. I doubt that's going to come up. Uh, I'm going to put in heart attack. Perfect. Myocardial infarction, heart attack. So I'm going to click on heart attack. And this is what they're suggesting. They're saying, take a look at heart attack. There's a lot of content here already, right? There's so many other things that people are talking about. Jaw pain. You can talk about jaw pain. That could be a search term that you can start ranking for. High blood pressure comes up. Alcohol intake comes up. Nitroglycerin and opioids come up. STEMI comes up. and STEMI comes up, right? So these are all the things that I can start searching for. Furthermore, this section is quite important because I can talk about prevention of heart attack, diagnosis of heart attack, mechanism of a heart attack, right? You get the idea. I don't want to beat this to death, but very very powerful and so they talk about coffee as an example and how if you look over here there's some content there if you look further down you can see that there's coffee roasting coffee brewing nutrition of coffee instant coffee those are all things that you can use um, and then they say you can find even more keywords by clicking on that particular uh, topic absolutely so now you want to understand what things can I, what searches are related. So another cool way to find keyword is to check out searches related to. Now we just did this by going to heart health. And what I did is when we went to heart health and I did a search, when I scrolled down, uh, this particular search engine, which is Google suggested, uh, where is it? Heart health tips or heart health awareness or heart, heart health symptoms. And when I clicked on heart health tips, it gave me even longer branched keywords like 20 ways to keep your heart healthy, healthy heart exercises, 13 rules for a healthy heart. I love that um, because now I have topics that I can actually use to create my content. And I can also see who else is ranking for this kind of content, right? So then I keep going down and I see, okay, these are the articles. I would like to write something about that. And this, the related searches can be inspiration. Uh, pro tip, click on one of these searches to keywords and they're basically saying if you click on one of these, you'll get even more stuff. And if you click on this, you get even more stuff. I love it. I think it's a that's a great idea. Uh, this will give you a list of related keywords. So 
that's true. So if you went, if you were to go all the way down, eventually you'd come to a point where this ends and you'll get a bunch of other related topics that you can, uh, that you can write about. They also suggest, besides using Google search engine and Wikipedia, to go on Reddit. So for example, if we went on Reddit and typed in heart health, right, then you might see, or something more like heart attack or cardiovascular disease, you're going to get probably some communities that pop up and some content here. Like, what is it about? Then you can click on this and look at all the different discussions that are on there. And something that might come up when they put in uh, dogs, they might come up on natural food for dogs and allergies. There's 12 comments here. So it's pretty engaged, pretty interactive. Now, of course, there's some uh, conversations that are you know thousands of comments long. So in this case, you'd add dog food allergies to your keyword ideas. Of course, if you're blogging or writing about dogs and you want to sell something, some service about dogs. Now, of course, if your dog content is mostly about dog breeds and you're, you sell dog breeds, I guess, I don't know, you sell different dogs, <laughs> then dog food allergies may not, may not be very good for you. It may not rank you very high because someone's like, hey, my dog's got allergies. I'm not trying to buy no damn dog. Right. That's that's something you have to understand. For example, if somebody's looking for supplements for heart health uh, to improve their heart health, they're looking for red ye red yeast rice, and they come on my website. Well, why would they want to book a consultation with me about their heart health if they're just looking for red yeast rice? So you want to be careful what you're using as well. But it is something to put into your to put into your keyword ideas, and we can do something with that later. Keyword it is a free SEO tool that scans Reddit for words, that phrases that people use, and sorts those phrases by monthly search volume. So this is nice because you want to get an idea of what are people actually searching for that makes them land on Reddit. So Reddit is a pretty good website for that kind of stuff, and that tool you could use above. So use Google and YouTube for suggestions. So we already did the Google part. Um, so they're talking about uh, use what Google suggests. So if you start typing something in, Google will suggest a bunch of other stuff. So for example, if you put in content marketing, they'll say content marketing, jobs, world, strategy, agency, platform, manager salaries, etc. And these are, because if Google suggests a keyword, you know that lots of people are searching for it. That's why they suggest it. And you can do the same thing for YouTube, of course. So going further down, sorry, I jump around so much. You can do the same thing for public speaking, public speaking subliminal, public speaking fear, right? You can do the same thing for Bing. <laughs> um, and if you want to see where people are talking, one of the best focus groups you can ever find is to type in forum or these days community. So you can type in the keyword, for example, uh, cardiovascular disease, heart health, plus forum. Uh, plus forums, plus board, plus community. Uh, that's a good way to, for example, in this situation, they are looking for, I guess, uh, coffee and home barista. Perfect. So now you can add yourself to this and see what people are asking about. To dig deeper, check out some of the threads on the forum to find other specific topics that target your audience and what they struggle with. Pretty cool. <laughs> Keyword research tool. So now we're going to get into the tool section. So one that I like is uh, the key, the Google Ads Planner. That's what they're referring to here, the keyword, the Google Keyword Planner. And it's pretty straightforward. It definitely has a lot of good metrics that you can uh, learn about. For example, if I put in coffee, uh, the competition for it is low, obviously, because it's very, it's too broad. You know, nobody who is selling coffee machines is going to want to pay a bunch of money for coffee. Now, what, what they're talking about here when we're doing keyword actual searches on Google is how much it's gonna cost you, to, for example, to run an advertisement, to run an ad. So coffee shop near me, coffee shops, coffee shops near me, co cafe near me. These are some of the search words, some of the keywords that somebody might be searching for. And you want, obviously, something that is quite, you don't want something that's super low, right? Uh, best coffee, if that's not ranking really well, you don't want to use that as your advertisement campaign, but you also don't want to use something that's very high because that's going to be expensive. L don't worry, we're going to get into that. You'll understand that in a minute. 
So you can go to explodingtopics.com, which is really cool because you can put in a keyword like serverless and it will give you a bunch of information about how many searches they are doing of this a month. Is it going up? Is it going down? It's a good tool to search, uh, to research your topic. The next one is keyword surfer. So because it shows you keyword ideas from inside Google search results, it is quite effective because most of the ads and things that we're going to run is probably going to be in Google. So they're going to give you some ideas, like you can do coffee because somebody misspelled it, or coffees or coffee, and you can see that it's pretty good similarity, so pretty good overlap, and it's got a decent volume. Maybe you can do that. Uber suggests apparently is a way to scrape Google itself and come up with ideas of different keywords that you might be interested in and also understand how much does it cost per click? Now cost per click basically means, let me give you guys an example to understand what cost per click is because we're going to come back to it. Imagine I want to sell flowers and it's going to cost me $2.50 CPC, the cost per click for, let's say, uh, buy online roses. Let's say that's the keyword, buy online roses, $2.50. So I will put in, put in a bid. If I put in less than $2.50, my ad will never show. It's pretty much almost guaranteed. If I put in an ad for $2, uh, for $3 instead of $2.50, I know this is $2.76, just go with it. <clears throat> then the next time I run my ad and it says somebody's looking for online roses, then my ad is probably going to get displayed and if somebody clicks on it, I get charged that $3 bid that I put in. Maybe a little bit less, but usually $3. So if 10 people click on my ad, I get charged $30 that day. Does that make sense? $2.50 is the minimum. Let's say I bid a little bit more. I bid $3 for my ad. When you, when you create an ad, that's how it works. So I paid $30. Now, of those 10 people who came on my website, what's my conversion rate? If all 10 end up buying from me, well, that's really good. If only one person buys from me, I spend $30 to get one person to buy from me. So that was my customer acquisition rate, for example. I paid $30 because 10 people clicked on that ad, came on my website. Nine of them had no interest in buying from me. Okay, let's go with that. <laughs> Hold that idea in your mind. SEMrush is great. It's a great keyword tool. I have it pulled up somewhere here. Okay, so let's do longevity diet. We'll do a search. And it's going to be for the US audience. And we're going to keep it at this date. You can see that it has a rather low search volume. Not a lot of people click on it and it's not very expensive. And the reason is it's just not very popular quite yet, or maybe it's dying down and there's something else more popular. So the trend is sort of dying down, it seems like. And it's much more popular in the US and it is maybe kind of popular in uh, Denmark and some other places. So the metric, as far as keywords, there is longevity diet, longevity diet meal plan, diet and longevity, and then these are longer keywords. These are questions that people may have asked online, right? And so you can decide and see, hey, maybe these are some of the things that I can start ranking for. They found about, they found some SERPs, 76 million uh, re uh, results for this particular keyword search. And it gives you a bunch of websites that are already ranking for it. Now you have to pay to get further metrics from SEMrush, but it is it is pretty useful. And here's some ads. So this company is run an ad for it. it. Looks like it. That's what I think. Or it could be that this is an ad on SEMrush. I don't know. <laughs> so pretty good, pretty good way to search. Instead of popping random keywords into a tool, SEMrush shows you the exact keywords that a site already ranks for. So you can go to SEMrush's all-in-one marketing tool and put in a particular website. So in this case, he put his own website in here. She put a, she put her own website in here, and it shows what keywords this website searches for. So for example, if you're interested in a particular company and you want to compete with them, well, then you put them in to this keyword, this uh, SEMrush tool, and it'll tell you all the keywords they're searching for. And all you got to do is just copy these keywords and try to outrank that person. It's super easy, right? So this guy, backlink 
owner owns uh, is ranking for Google Search Console, YouTube videos, Google Keyword Planner, YouTube views, YouTube tags, because that's if people come on there, they probably buy some sort of product from him that he's going to be able to profit from. A RF, I don't know how you you say that. Uh, I have it pulled up. Is this it? No, no. Here. So here's one. I put in heart health at a HRF, a HRF's website. Heart health, and uh, you can see you can see the the volume, right? You can see what the conversion rates are, and you can see what. Yeah, Heart Health Park. Obviously, nobody's clicking on that. <laughs> heart Health Supplements, Best Exercises. So you're, tr you're trying to see how competitive something is. And then it keeps going. Women's Heart Health, Herbs for Heart Health, February Heart Health Month, right? Red Wine for Heart Health. All of these are topics that you can use and search for. So this is great. This is a wonderful, wonderful tool. <clears throat> and it gives you some more information. It's the Keyword Explorer tool that you would use here. So Keyword Difficulty. How difficult is it for you to rank for this? Now, don't take this too literally because it might say that it's really difficult, but in fact, you might be able to do okay with it. Remember, if you're a physician writing about a topic, that's going to be taken into account in the authority metric for that website of yours. The cost per click is really high. So this is a tough one to advertise for if you were to advertise for it. So that's really good. And it talks about what the organic chance of you to rank for this is? What's, your, what's the chance that you can organically rank for this? What's the chance that you can pay to rank for this particular keyword search? And I don't even know what keyword they put in there. Keyword search doesn't say, oh, keyword search. Actual topic they're searching is keyword search. <laughs> Interesting. Um, my one gripe with Keyword Explorer is that it's not great at coming up with new keyword ideas. Right, and that's not what you would use it for, right? It would not be what you're using it for. You're using it as an idea to determine how much you'd have to maybe spend and how likely it is that you might rank for something. Keyword difficulty, KD. Now, we've come across that a few times over here. KD percentage, how difficult it is to rank for this. So diet meal plan is really easy to rank for because not a lot of people are writing about it. That's the keyword difficulty. How competitive is it? And that's what I said. Don't rely on these metrics too much. You can still try to rank for it. Now, this is where we get into long tail keywords and short tail keywords. So for example, heart health is gonna be incredibly competitive. You guys saw it. I did a search for heart health and you saw how many big name companies came up. Like there's no way I can compete with KP and AHA and Harvard, etc. And it's not even worth it because uh, I would spend so much money and I would still be super far down, likely. But instead, what I could do is I could use a long tail keyword. So I could start with t-shirts and then say blue t-shirts, which would be a two to three word phrase, which is a little less competitive than this one, but it's still pr quite competitive. You can see here it doesn't change much. So high competition, low competition, the competition decreases, but the conversion is not that great. And you can see the conversion actually starts improving as I go to something like blue American apparel t-shirt, right? Because I'm being very specific, the person's searching for it. Now, it may not be a lot of people who are typing that in, right? They might just type in, uh, I don't know, Zara t-shirt. So I'm not going to be able, I'm, it's going to be difficult for me to compete with Zara t-shirt, but I might be able to find t-shirts like Zara t-shirt, something like that. So you can read this for yourself, um, just kind of talking about the length of it, um, examples of head terms versus long term, uh, long tail keywords. Really good. It's, I, I loved the write-up. It makes a lot of sense. The other thing he talks about is authority of sites on Google's first page. One thing to understand is that the page itself might rank really high. And the way to find that out is do a search and see who comes up. This is, uh, don't worry about this term, type in heart health. And who comes up? Well, when I typed in heart health, Kaiser Permanente came up, hum Human N came up, um, but these are sponsored. Let's see what the first one is, CDC. Is there any chance that you can outrank CDC? No, impossible. CDC is authoritative. Even if, if and, and if Wiki came up, good luck. You'd never outcompete that because they are called, they're considered authorities on the topic. And that is why we're talking about authority of sites. So there's no way you have any chance on that, right? So one other thing that you can do 
is if you do a search for a particular topic, let's say heart health prevention, and you can see here Kendall Crossland comes up, Vi these are websites that are like nobody's ever even heard of. I've never even heard of it. They're av advertising. Um, they're, they're, these are sponsored content. So I probably have a chance over here, right? I probably have a chance over here when it comes to marketing, advertising for those things. But if you go down, we're back to Mayo Clinic. We'll, we're back to CDC, health.gov, and Harvard. So again, very difficult for me to search. Heart health prevention in women. Now suddenly there's eight tips to reduce your heart health. So this is kind of cool, but it is from the FDA. So this is the CIRM that we talked about. So that might be a good option for me, but still quite competitive to get in on this. Now, when I go down, this is womenshealth.gov. Now they're probably an authority on women's health. Mount Sinai, Mayo Clinic, Center for CDC. Again, these are quite, quite impossible for me to have a chance to rank for it. So what about hmm, women? living with heart disease. What are my chances here? Now, again, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It just means that you got to un understand that choosing a different keyword might give you a better chance. So again, the CDC came up. This is not sponsored. Of course, there are authorities, so I'm not going to be here. Go Red for Women. Okay, I definitely have a chance over these guys. Never even heard Go Red for Women. National Institute of Health, Mayo Clinic, Women's Heart, yeah, these are these are well less known stuff. Women's is not well known, so I could probably land over here. Um, Heartandstroke.ca. You know, I haven't heard of it, so less likely. I mean, more likely that I would that, that I could outcompete these guys. And then there's some search content here. And of course, if you wanted to, you could write some other content like this and still rank. Right? This would show up if you search for this keyword. You could rank for that. All right. So we talked about the difficulty. Um, if you look at the KD percentage difficulty, so for example, 63 is a low difficulty rate. So coffee near me, you'd have a maybe better chance. But again, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Inst Instagram, logo, messenger, well, these are different keywords, so that doesn't matter. Okay, keyword finder, that's another tool that you can use for, it suggests different types of keywords that you could use. Moz Pro is another one that a lot of people use for their keyword search. And this is really good. What this author says here is we recently tested a bunch of them and we found that they all size up they all size up keyword difficulty based on a combination of page authority and domain authority. Yet they all tend to come up with completely different keyword difficulty scores. Bottom line, if your favorite keyword tool includes a keyword difficulty feature, go with that. It may not be perfect, but they tend to give you a general idea of where you're at in the competition. Here's another cool one. Can I rank? It's a, it's a website you can use to see like, hey, can I actually rank for this? And then the ranking probability is like, oh, okay, yeah, you got a 90% chance of ranking for this. Is SEO a good keyword for a page like this? Yes. They will analyze your website. They'll say, yes, if you use SEO, you probably have a good chance. And I, I really like this. I think this is a great way for you to be like, all right, all right, I have a chance. You know, my website's got some other authority. Um, and then there's a little thing about search volumes. Understand that the higher the search volume, sometimes the better. But if it's a really low search volume, you still might be able to rank through rank for it well. Another concept to understand is click-through rate when it comes to keyword searches. So an organic click-through rate means if I do a search for this keyword, what is the, by the way, these are the other suggestions that they're saying here. What is the chance that somebody will click through this? What's the chance that somebody will actually click based on that keyword? And you can see here for some particular uh, content, it, it might be going down over time or it might be going up over time. And that's really what you want to find out. And the reason for that sometimes is if I use best lighting for video, the reason the click through rate might be low is because Google will automatically give a bunch of suggestions. So nobody even is going to click. They're going to be like, oh, okay, great. I'm going to get the Manfrotto. <laughs> of course I'm going to get the Manfrotto. I'm not going to get the Kulux. Shit. So then they're not even going to click on this website. So the click-through rate is going to go low. And that's a good one to understand. And then, of course, Google now packs a search result with more ads than ever before, right? You guys saw how many ads were at the very top of my search. So your click-through rate might go really low because you're all the way down here. And people are going to click on these first. 
Well, that means you could just run an ad, but that's why we need to understand these, these concepts. So going further down the list, um, yeah, all of the Moss Pro and a, 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 anyway, they all have different tools that you can use. Going down, going down. Uh, oh, this was pretty good. So difficulty. If your site is new, target low competition terms. We already talked about that. Don't go for heart health. Go for heart health in postmenopausal women, right? So they're talking about when I first launched Backlink, I targeted almost 100% long tail keywords like how to get backlinks instead of backlinks. Backlinks would be impossible to search for, to rank for. And because I didn't have a ton of sites to compete with, I was able to get some organic traffic rolling in within a few weeks. Now let's talk about organic traffic, guys. This is incredibly important to us. Today, my site has backlinks from over 37 different domains, 37,000 different domains. So when you put in backlink into your search engine tool organizer analyzer, you'll see that, oh, wow, this website is getting a ton of backlinks, meaning other people are linking to you. So I can target more competitive keywords now because my website is already has this authority part to it. Does that make sense? Imagine you're a website talking about heart health and nobody's linking to you. Well, dude, your backlinking strategy sucks, number one, and your authority level is low, so it's less likely that you're gonna rank high. But you can build that over time, don't worry. It's just that you need to create content that is relevant, that is accurate, that is informative, that people actually click through and share with other people, and other people are willing to link to your content, like, hey, Dr. Mo wrote a really good article on cardiovascular disease. I really want to check on that. So now we get to the cost per click, which I already discussed. Remember the $2.50 for that one keyword, buying roses online? This is the CPC is a single metric that answers one important question. Do people searching for this keyword actually spend money? So if somebody's looking for a particular keyword that I'm going to rank for, let, no, okay, let me, let me rephrase that. I want to bring people to my website to consult with me on heart health coaching in women or heart, heart disease in women. If I put in heart, health, heart disease in women in some tool analyzer, keyword analyzer, and the CPC is super, super low, what does that mean? So let's go figure that out. Do people searching for this keyword actually spend money? So yeah, search volume is nice and all, but if that keyword has zero commercial intent, then there's no point in targeting that term, right? It's not gonna drive extra traffic to your website. It has very little commercial content. So it's not gonna be a good tool, a good keyword for you to use, at least in, the, in terms of advertising. So here it says, for example, one of my target keywords is link building services. According to this, a refs, whatever, this keyword gets 1.3, which is very low. That's considered super, super low. So if I only looked at the search volume, I'd say this is a terrible keyword, right? Because not a lot of people are searching for it, but check this out. That's why it's super important to also look at CPC. CPC is $25. The average person who does the search for this keyword, where is it? Link building services is going to spend quite a lot of money, $25. It means that if I now want to advertise for this keyword as an advertiser, I'm going to have to spend a lot of money. But if somebody lands on my webpage looking for this keyword, it means that they're probably going to buy something. The chance that they're going to buy something from me is incredibly high. I hope that makes sense. You got to look at it from all sides. You got to look at it from the side of an advertiser. You got to look at it from the side of a website creator. You got to look at it from the, from the side of the patient who's coming to your service right? If, they, if they're willing to pay $25, so for example, if we go to longevity diet and we see a CPC of 110, well, looks like the average click doesn't earn a whole lot of money, but it's not bad. If the volume's there, it might make sense, but the volume is low, the CPC is low. The average person who's clicking on this is maybe not going to spend a whole lot of money, right? So going down further, the business fit. This is what we talked about. Here's, here's where you look at how likely it is that someone searching for a keyword will become a customer. CPC helps you figure this out, but it doesn't tell you the entire story. A few weeks ago, this person 
came across a keyword called backlink checker. So he's like, oh, should I, should I start ranking for this keyword? Right? So for me, it might be uh, red, ye red yeast rice in heart disease. Should I use that keyword and write an article? Well, let's take a look. On the surface, that keyword might be great, pretty good volume. I mean, not great, but decent. But it has a decent CPC as well. It's not too bad. Um, it's not that competitive. So the keyword's a winner, right? Well, not really. If you see, Backlink is an SEO training company, which means that I don't get Backlink analysis. So what, what he's saying is, look, Backlink Checker, if somebody comes to my website, there's nothing I can do for it. There's nothing I can do for this person. I don't have any products to serve that person. So just because you can rank for something doesn't mean you want them on your, on your website. It's just unnecessary traffic where you'll never get a conversion. But instead, because he has a YouTube training course, he'll just create a content called YouTube SEO. And that's what he did. And he ranked high for that. And so now he's getting conversions. Okay. And then you can do keyword trends. You can look at Google Trends. It's uh, trends.google.com. And you can take a look if like, is, the, is over time voice search SEO, is that going up or is it going down? It looks like from 2014, it's definitely going up. Maybe you hit a nidus uh, peak or whatever it's called around here in 2018, okay. Um, and advanced tips and strategies, that's it. That's all I'm gonna give you guys. I, I do wanna just say, check out SEMrush to do some searches here, which we did. We went, to, we went through that together. Do check out Answer the Public. So preventing heart disease, or I can just type in, if I type in heart disease in here, oh, that's right. Uh, if you do too many searches, it uh, kicks you out and says you have to pay. But if you scroll down when I did uh, uh, heart disease, you can see that there is uh, a bunch of qu different questions. Is, is preventing heart disease, um, what type of heart disease cannot be prevented? This is, um, well, anyway, you have to understand this wheel. It tells you the search volume and the cost per click, and it tells you what are people searching for? Um, why is preventing heart disease important? These are the questions people are asking, right? And if you can search, if you can use these as your article topics, you can probably rank well. You have to learn how to use this website. It's quite, it's, it's quite intuitive, but it does take a little bit of time. And we also talked about Google Ads, ads.google.com, and you can use their keyword planner over here. We did AREFs, so here I did heart health. And that is it, guys. I hope this is helpful. Take care.